photo walks with photography, flowers, gardens, insects, lights, and angels. Can you tell us where you are and who you're with today? Go ahead, Don. Hi there. My name is Don Kamarichka, and I'm here with Virtual Photo Walks. And here we have John Butterill. And uh, we are here uh, behind some beautiful flowers in a wildflower farm. And uh, we're going to be exploring these flowers, um, both the, uh, the colors, the insects, uh, some water droplets, and different compositions, and different ways to take pictures uh, out here in the garden. We've got some interesting things working against, uh, against us today. Uh, the heat, it's I think uh, plus uh, 32 degrees Celsius, which is uh, around 90 or so Fahrenheit, something, something like that. Uh, a little bit of wind, but not too bad, and bright, bright sunlight, uh, which is going to be a bit of a challenge here, but we'll work within those limitations and try to have some fun. So uh, we did some scouting around, and I found these interesting, they're like a lily type of flower here. And uh, you know, w when I'm looking at flowers like this, I always try to find different color combinations that might be interesting or uh, different patterns. And I'm looking like right into the center of this flower here. It's really quite beautiful, the lines and things uh, that, that sort of just jump right out at you. And there's a central point. You can play around a little bit with that and have some fun with it. Um, but also, these are pretty high above, above the ground. And you can't see it, but the sun is sort of right up there. And if I'm, I'm going to see, like, what's it going to look like if uh, I get underneath and I get the sun kind of coming right through them there. That looks pretty cool. I'll probably try to make a picture there as well. And so it's, it's dirty business, but oh, there's an ant too. So there's always going to be some, always going to find some bugs, some interesting stuff hanging around the flowers. Unfortunately, I haven't seen much in the way of foraging insects so far today. It's really hot outside, so very little in the way of bees. Well, bees are in trouble these days anyhow, but let's... Uh, I'll let you grab your camera. All right, I'll grab the camera and we'll, we'll switch. Okay. Break the flower there. Hey, John, right. and just for an FYI, if you can just remember to keep that microphone just away from your mouth, mouth a little bit. As you get excited, it gets a little overmodulated. Dial it into maybe about F8, ISO 200, get a good fast shutter speed here. And I'm just going to get in right on, uh, this is with a 24 to 105 lens. And these are bigger flowers, so this it's not even a macro lens, but it's going to work good for the bigger subjects. I want to get something in the background. And it's not just where I'm photographing, but I want to try and get colors. Can I photobomb your flower? Oh, yeah, there you go, <laughs> photobomb the flower. I want to get the colors in the background as well so that I can get the whole field of flowers uh, sort of all coming into one. And so taking one shot, there we go. And so that looks pretty good. Again, harsh light. There's not a whole lot that I can do about that. Although I can try to fill in some of the shadows a little bit. I have a small reflector. It's not going to do me too good uh, unless I may be coming in underneath, which I can do for my next shot, which is going to be from underneath. And I'll put, stand on your head for us. I'm going to stand on my head for you. Oh, this should be really and entertaining. If this can add, nah, it's probably not going to add too much extra light. But it is what it is. And it might be something. Oh, and there's a really cool beetle. Oh, well, it's gone. All right. So now I'm going to take this lens. It's a bit more versatile for this kind of shot. I'm going to go a little bit wide, the 24 end of things. And I'm going to get underneath here. Yeah, yeah, it's all part of being a photographer, right? That's kind of interesting. I like this one here. I might cheat a little bit and break off one of these. Oh, well. and zoom in on just that one central flower. I'm looking at this flower right here, and I'm seeing the, uh, the stamens being, uh, they're, they're kind of casting uh, silhouettes on this one leaf here, and it's kind of an interesting little color combination, or contrast. And I'm hiding the sun right behind it and letting it just, just peek out the side. That's yeah, pretty cool. What are some of the stuff I'm shooting at? So, because I'm kind of shooting into the sun, I can be a little bit more flexible with my settings here. I'm getting a shutter speed uh, that's probably hitting into around one four thousandth of a second uh, when you shoot into the sun. That's not uncommon. Uh, ISO 200 and F8 is what I'm at. I could drop that ISO down to 100 and get identical results as far as the image quality is concerned. Yeah. There we go. There's much noise as there used to be, or is that just the noise is disappearing very quickly. Now this is being shot with a 1DX, so I can shoot at ISO 3200 with almost no noise. Um, but the lower the better, because the lower the ISO, you also have better dynamic range. 
and uh, you know, that helps you recover detail from the shadows and the highlights, especially in a scene like this where you will have darker shadows and brighter highlights and you'll need to kind of crunch them back together uh, and have a bit more success with that. So lower is always better. Uh, let's play around with some more flowers. I saw some interesting ones right over here. All right, I'm with you. The patterns in these are, are quite beautiful. I'm not sure, I think there's some sort of uh, African daisy. But uh, I'm going to try to see, not stepping on any, but these ones here have a beautiful pattern right in the center of them. I don't know if maybe, yeah. well, I'll, I'll, we'll show the pictures later. I'll be sure to, to show them off. I can, get, I can get in on If that. you can get in on these, these patterns inside the center of these flowers here have a lot of depth in them. And if I could even just make a frame just with the center of, uh, of one of those flowers, I think those colors and those lines and that sort of repeating fractal will make a, a really interesting photograph. And if it's not interesting enough, uh, I have here my little makeshift spray bottle. And that's going to work to add a little bit of extra depth to the image, too. So, Let's see. How close can I get with my 24 to 105? I might not be able to get close enough. Nope. That's about as close as I can get, which is only filling the frame with about... Uh, the, the flower fills about a quarter of the frame. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to switch lenses. And I'm going to go into my uh, much closer macro gear. Right. Uh, this lens can't quite get to that same level of macro photography. You want to get right into the texture. So I want to get right into the texture. I don't even need to see the full flower. I need to see just a tiny little component of that. So give me uh, 20 seconds. I'll go run and grab my camera bag. I'll be right back. All right. So in here, I've got uh, a whole bag of tricks. Here we are. We're revealing the bag of tricks here. Hang on. Revealing the bag of tricks here. So let's see. My macro lens is currently on my infrared camera, so I'm going to have to quickly switch lenses. Can you convert those back from infrared, or are you, you can. stuck? It will cost you as much as it costed you to convert it in the first place, right. which was around 450 bucks. So right. it's not exactly a cheap thing to do. No. Is everybody just getting into that because it's cool, or are they uh, getting into it because there's some money to be made? <laughs> there's not a whole lot of money to be made in infrared photography. It is cool, um, but it's it's one of those things that uh, some people will use them for weddings because it, it does some really interesting thing with skin. Uh, it makes your complexion much softer because the infrared light will bounce into your skin before it bounces out a little bit, and uh, and that's kind of fun. But it makes your eyes look a little bit like a vampire, so uh, it's not for everybody. <laughs> It does. <laughs> All right, so let's see now. I can get much closer with this particular setup. There we go. The furthest away I can get is covering the entire frame and creating some very beautiful colors. I don't know, It's the, the light is really hard to see. Yeah, but, put it right up to the lens if you can. But uh, with what I've got here, I'm, uh, I'm getting very, very close in on the flower. I, can, I can't even get the whole thing around, and I want to get even closer. This particular lens lets me increase my magnification. Uh, and as I get closer and closer, I will have to bring my ISO back up uh, and even my aperture even open a little bit further. This is standard 105 is your workhorse lens, huh? Yeah, the 24 to 105 was my standard workhorse lens, but this is a very specialized macro lens. Uh, this is the MPE 65 millimeter lens. Is that the one you do the snowflakes? This is the same lens that I do the snowflakes this with. This is the famous snowflake. This <laughs> will be in the Smithsonian one day. Uh, when I'm dealing with this, th there's little stamens inside the... What's that? <laughs> uh, the, uh, the stamens of the flower come up a little bit over the surface, and we're talking maybe the, a centimeter or so, something like that. And so I'm going to actually have my camera... Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to be shooting at a very, very shallow depth of field specifically so that I can get in just on those tiny little stamens and maybe even have some of the flower in the background become less in focus so that I can choose just a very, very specific point of view. And so my depth of field is so shallow that I can now have something that's maybe a tenth of a millimeter thick info. If you can see, I'm kind of hunched over my knee here. Uh, and I'm sort of 
putting all of my weight on, on my legs so that I can hold the camera very stably, uh, even though I'm right above it. And uh, maybe even zoom in a tiny bit more. I'm going to change my camera to be on its fastest shooting mode. And I'm just going to take a ton of shots of this one flower. And so what I'm about to do is going to shoot pretty much a roll of film in about a second, which is going to make you cringe. And so now I'm going to get in here. There's your roll of film. And I'm going to bet almost all of these are out of focus. And I'm, in, I'm introducing another problem with this particular setup as well. Because when I'm right over top of the camera like that, if you can see, or uh, on top of the flower, my lens is casting a shadow. So I have to be very, very particular. I might even have to approach it from a more of a side angle because my shadow is going to create all sorts of problems. And I can use flash to try and fix that, but only if I'm completely covering it. So what I'm going to get you to do, John, uh, is you are going to be my light blocker. And you're going to uh, you're going to stand maybe a little bit further this way, just so that I can see your shadow here. If we can get you perfect, there you go, uh, a little bit further. There we are. And now my shutter speed is going to be a fraction of what it was. And now I've got some challenges with light. Uh, I don't have enough of it. So that's when I grab and wind. Yeah, and wind. Uh, that's when I grab my uh, my ring flash here. And with this flash setup. Uh, I'm able to generate my own light source and get a much, much faster shutter speed. In fact, I'm going to switch the camera into full M mode right now, and I'm going to dial it into 1 250th of a second or so exposure. Yeah. And uh, ISO down as low as it can be. And now I can even take this off the camera and point it off on different angles. And get something way too dark. <laughs> well, uh, and then try again, just quickly, on some different settings. I, I might get something useful out of that. But now, let's take it a step further. When I'm taking photographs, I'm always building a scene. Uh, I'm always adding different ingredients together. And so I've got this little spray bottle here. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to spray this flower. Want my walking it or? No, we're perfect. So now I've got tons of little water droplets all sitting on the surface of those flower petals. Yeah. And so now that's the missing piece of this puzzle. I'm going to take this and jump right in on that. Oops. Helps if I point the flash in the right direction. There we go. There is an award-winning shot, I hope. And how many of these do you map together? So sometimes I do focus stacking, which might be required in this case, but I'm really liking the results even without focus stacking here. Um, and that's because when you're photographing on this scale, your depth of field gets so shallow that uh, if you wanted to have more than a millimeter or two in focus, mm -hmm. you, you can't, no matter what settings you set the camera to. So the distance from the top of that to the, is about a millimeter, so you're getting almost all I'm, the I'm getting a fair amount, but I might stack a few of them, and that's when I photograph it at different focus points. That's why I take so many pictures. And so if I can take it at those different focus points, then that'll allow me to combine them together afterwards in Photoshop and, uh, and have a bit more success with a good image. So I start on the outer edge, and I sort of fade in. So my flash keeps up with me. So you take stuff back into your house and set up a tripod sometimes and play too. Oh, always. Always playing with um, light from different angles in in a in a controlled studio, which is my kitchen counter. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm able to play around with it in many different ways as well, a little bit more successfully sometimes than in the field. Are we still there, Bruce? Yes. Everything's okay. everything's looking right. really, really All great. All right, I think I've shot that flower out for now. Okay. Uh, if I was here on my own, I might spend another half an hour on this one single flower, just playing around with water droplets. And I can even see that there's the sun coming in through is right. creating interesting little patterns reflected through the water droplets. Almost oh like yeah, I can see one glass. one drop there that is really yeah. There's quite a couple large. of them on that leaf right there. So, I'll go for it. You, know, you want me to go for I'll it? Go for All it. right. Well, let's take this flash off and try to use the sun as my light source. Then. Yeah, why not? And uh, let's put her back into aperture priority. And 
bring our aperture or our ISO back up quite a bit and get right in on those little droplets. You are. You're, you're getting it almost like if you can imagine as a child playing with a magnifying glass yeah, right. and you get the focus point on the other side and you burn ants and leaves and things with it, which uh, I'm sure every young boy did it at some point in their life, <laughs> then, uh, then that's what you see here in these little droplets. So something will come of that, I hope. Yes. Let's move on and play around with that, uh, that spray bottle a little bit more too with this particular setup. When I'm typically dealing with um, uh, water droplets, I don't use the ring flash. I use an off-camera flash, mm -hmm. uh, which we'll dig out and use for the next set of images. So I have this uh, off-camera shoe cord. It connects in very nicely onto that, and then onto the top of the camera so that I can hand hold my flash into any, any odd angle that I want. Oh, it's a hot thing for a personal photo officer. Hey, there you go. <laughs> All right. So we'll just leave this here. Hopefully it won't bake too much in the sun. And then we'll move on. Where are we headed? Just up this way here. We're going to see what else we could find. It was a beautiful spot, close to the public, but they let us poke around in here. Sweating buckets already today. We're saving the hottest part of the day for the end, though. You'll see that. It'll be fun. Oh, well, you have, like, cameras and everything. Oh, like, no. Watch your step. <laughs> so as you can see, there's tons of different flowers along here. And, and as we just spent a few minutes photographing one tiny little flower, we could spend an entire day throughout these fields pretty easily. And we're going to try to track down some insects, too, because they always liven up a photograph. And I saw this one patch of flowers here that I thought was kind of interesting. Now, have you ever grown, oh look at, yeah, there's some bugs on that. Have you ever grown and say, I just created 20 hours of post-production work? Oh yeah, <laughs> whenever I'm out here. <laughs> Why I'm, did I do this? <laughs> I know that I will be spending hours upon hours, a very painful time, uh, post-producing these images. I'll, like when I'm editing a snowflake, I'll typically spend around four hours on one. Um, for some of the macro work uh, that requires focus stacking, I'll spend almost the exact same amount of time. So let's see what I can come up with here. There's little tiny bees that are flying around in here, but as you can see, the wind is blowing, yeah. and that's a nightmare for this kind of work. I kind of have to wait a minute for the wind to die down again. Um, but I can play around with other things while I wait. For example, I can get in here and uh, I see that they're somewhat transparent. I can see my hand as I go through. What happens if I take the flash and put it on the other side? Let's just see. You zoom the lens out a little bit. I have no idea what's going to happen. And that's pretty cool. All right. Maybe play around with a slightly different composition. I like that. That's at least something interesting. Uh, it's always a bit of experimentation. It'd be an interesting beetle. He's hiding around you in got here. Let's see if I can't uncover him without scaring him off. Oh, no, there he goes. I don't know <laughs> if you caught bee. that. Oh, there's a bee. All right. Oh. Oops. And the bee's gone. Such is my life. Uh, <laughs> I uh, called Central Casting and said send over a butterfly, but yeah, I don't yeah. know. Let's see. I see all sorts of different bugs and beetles and insects. You just kind of have to dig for them here. He's an interesting oh, beetle. There's a right in front of you. Oh, where? I don't right, see him. On the left. On the left. Oh, right there. So, John, as he's chasing that bee, can you ask him if there's any tricks to capturing a bee on a flower? That's that's a difficult there's shot for most people. Japanese beetles that are an invasive species. They're beautiful to photograph, but oh, they shouldn't be here. Any tricks you can do to get the bees to come, like putting some honey on the... Yeah, plant? you can. Uh, you <laughs> Maybe can some sugar water or something? Some honey, some sugar water. But oftentimes, I just look for whatever happens to come my way. Uh, I see a ton of different beetles. I see uh, there was a hoverfly right in here. Let's see if I can get this hoverfly. 
they, they usually stay pretty still. Yeah, got him pretty good. Oh, there you go. So it's it's all about like I could this one patch of flowers I've seen so much life coming in and around it. Tiny little ants, tiny little, little black beetles. Um, there looks like there's a leaf hopper or uh, oh that's an ambush bug in there. Those guys are nice. Hey John, as long as he's talking about bees, has he ever tried to capture any hummingbirds? There's one flower here. There's a tiny little bug. It's called an ambush bug. And he's got a bit of a shield on him. Uh, and he lies in wait for another insect to come into the flower and then he pounces on them, uh, paralyzes them, and then uh, sort of drinks their insides. A bug's got to do what a bug's got to do. But do you uh, ever try to get the hummingbirds and things like that as oh, well? Oh, of course. You always try to get just about anything. I mean, the opportunities are around you to photograph. Uh, well, what, so what's the trick to a hummingbird? Because they're so quick. They usually come in, grab their nectar, their drink, and then they're gone again. So is there a trick to that? Well, he's... he's uh, He's shooting at uh, four hundredths of a second or, and more, four thousandths of a second. But not anymore, because uh, I'm using the flash in its regular mode. So I've adjusted my settings to have a flash sync speed of one two fiftieth of a second. Yeah. Bruce was asking about capturing the uh, hummingbirds. Well, it's always better if you're trying to photograph hummingbirds to do so um, with artificial light. So you're, if you're using flash, the flash duration, if you can set your flash duration uh, to be uh, very, very short, usually it means lower power flash and having more flashes around. Uh, you can get a flash duration somewhere in the neighborhood of one one hundred thousandth of a second. And that's faster than your camera's fastest shutter speed. And if that's the only or the primary light source, it's, it'll freeze the wings pretty solid. Uh, but, but, but on the other hand, the hummingbirds are, are, a bit, are afraid of people and they don't hang a long around quite long enough is there does he shoot remotely and set up a camera on a tripod just waiting for them to come by or how does that work they'll uh humming, hummingbirds are uh, will come uh to the to a feeder or a flower and just keep coming back and if you're lucky there's five or ten of them fighting for access to those flowers yeah yeah once absolutely. you determine that they're gonna be come to that flower you just wait your well, and oftentimes with hummingbirds or any kind of birds, if you know where the feeder is, you can kind of build a stage nearby. And a lot of birds, when they're first interested in a uh, in a scene, they'll land on a nearby branch before they go in and, and see the, uh, the subject. Or with hummingbirds, they'll hover maybe in a particular spot. And the way that you build the surrounding, you can kind of predict where they'll be when they're not at the feeder, but they're close to it. And so you can, uh, you can get some good natural looking shots, even though you've got a semi-captive subject. Interesting. Zoom in a little bit on this guy and bring my aperture a little bit wider. As I zoom in on this lens, uh, I'm actually changing the effective aperture. There's a conversion chart in the, uh, in the manual. So if I'm shooting at f10 and I'm at 2 to 1 magnification, I'm actually shooting at like f48 or something. <laughs> and diffraction limiting comes in and helps ruin the shot. So I usually have to shoot pretty wide on my aperture as far as the camera thinks. In the old days in film, we used to have the rep reciprocity failure for long exposures. Yeah, but you'd have reciprocity failure, but that was almost easier to deal with than having to deal with um, a long exposure noise that you'd have to deal with digitally. Because That's if you're right. trying to do a Star Trail photograph on film, uh, you'd, if you calculate it all right, you'd have better results. But uh, in digital, you don't have to do the calculations, but you might not have as good of a success if you go for like an hour or two hour exposure. Let's see, let's give this bug one more chance here at a at stardom before the wind picks up and destroys what I'm trying to do here. And as you can see, I'm sweating buckets. It's hot out here. <laughs> Suffer for your art. Suffer for the art. That's right. So you can be shooting snowflakes and be on the other extreme. I'm trying to be as stable as possible too. If you notice, I'm resting my wrist against the uh, the side of the camera here just to give myself another point of contact because I have to reach out and over a little bit and uh, and there's just so many points of movement not only is the wind blowing but I'll sway a little bit as well so it's always a challenge to uh, take these pictures but uh, how are we for time John? Uh, we got another 20 minutes. Alright 
Well, let's play around with the uh, battery dies. We're done. Okay, when the battery dies, <laughs> or when the camera melts here. Yeah. Uh, let's go and see a few more interesting things. There's some bluegrass down here right. that, by itself, is not interesting at all. Uh, but as soon as you spray it with water droplets, oh, look at that black alive. butterfly. Oh, kind of... I got the wrong lens on. Oh, and comes. there he goes. And will he land again? Yes, he will. Watch that microphone. Or maybe not. Well, he's beautiful to look at, oh, well. but it's a little hard to photograph. <laughs> I chased one of those big blue butterflies all over uh, Costa Rica one time. He just land for about a millisecond. In the I know. The best butterfly shots that I've taken, uh, we'll stop right here. Uh, best butterfly shots I've taken have been when they randomly come up to me and I wasn't even expecting them. So let's, let's take a look at some of this grass here. It, it's got a lot of depth to it, but on a macro scale, if I zoom in on one blade of grass after I've sprayed it with water, and I can get some very interesting effects that start happening. Uh, so this is my little makeshift spray bottle here. Let's see if I can't get something interesting to start showing up. We'll have uh, Don's uh, link to his website where they can go and look at his uh, snowflake photography, which is how I first uh, found them and I took one look at this snowflake and I just couldn't believe the detail and the quality of it and I said I gotta meet this guy. Well I'm I glad you see did what John. the heck he's doing. <laughs> this is amazing. Yeah it's very cool to see you. It's like you're and meet Don as well. What I've done is I've created tiny little droplets of water that are sticking to this grass very nicely and they're staying very, very circular. Um, that means that if I get on just the right angle, if I can like peer through them, then I can see the entire landscape that I have on the other side through that little water droplet. And we'll play around with uh, refractions with a flower in the background in a little bit, but let's start playing around with this. How much uh, is that lens? Uh, the lens that I've got here, it's not the most expensive macro lens that Canon offers. It's going to cost around, uh, I think, 11, 1400, oh, depending on where bad. you buy it. I thought it would be more than that. Well, you have to, you normally, you have to use a flash with it, but I'm trying to skirt that today uh, by shooting at higher ISOs. And, uh, and just hoping that I get some interesting clear shots. For this type of shot where I want the landscape to appear in the refraction, I can't use a flash because I need as much light coming in from the ambient light source way in the distance as I have in the foreground. So the sun has to do that. Yeah, well, I, there's, there's tons of them right in there. But let's see if I can. I might have to spray it again because it's hot. The water's evaporating almost immediately. Uh, if, if I were to wait five minutes, the water would be gone. My lens up. <laughs> All right. So now let, let's try to get in here and find. Some interesting droplets. It looks kind of cool, but I want to get even closer. I'm going to get all the way to three to one life size in this particular case. Dial the lens into f6.3, which I don't have the conversion chart handy, but it's going to get close. So I'm going to fill the frame with a couple of these tiny little droplets. That could be interesting. The exposure is not too bad on them, and we'll see what the uh, underlying landscape is. There's even, I can see, some interesting little droplets on this one leaf right here. See if I can't get in underneath there. And then the wind blows. Hopefully I got enough to make something work out of that. Oh, that looks beautiful. All right, and again, 
an entire day could be spent right here in this patch of boring blue grass. Uh, <laughs> so, so John, I have a question. That's the world of uh, macro photography. In in today's technology, where people are shooting right, with their question. smartphones, what type of suggestions? Does he have for people that want to shoot similar type of close-ups of bugs, flowers, and water droplets on tall grass with a smartphone? Have you tried to do much uh, close-up stuff with uh, smartphones? I have. Um, not often, though. What I would try to do if you're using a smartphone is to use a close-up filter. They make them for digital SLRs. They're effectively reading glasses for your camera. Yeah. And so they'll just sit on the front of it. And you can hold them in place. You don't have to get anything fancy. I bought a kit for uh, my, my digital SLRs. 20 bucks got me four different filters, some of them pretty extreme. And uh, and I just worked with that. Uh, it, it's fun. And you can put them in front of anything. A uh, point and shoot camera, a cell phone camera, just put anything. These look beautiful. So I've got lots of different reds and pinks and, and purples happening in here. But unfortunately, not a whole lot in the way of, uh, of insect life. In some of these flowers, though, if you look closely, and I, I would spend maybe about an hour or so looking around, seeing what kind of interesting insects I might find. These make great homes for crab spiders. And so crab spiders, uh, they'll change their color to be either uh, yellow or pink, the goldenrod crab spiders that we have around here anyhow. And they'll sit in a flower, and they'll blend in perfectly. And their their legs look a lot like the little uh, central tendrils of they these flowers. They actually change color? They, they do change color. It takes oh. about a day for them to change color. Uh, and they'll match, uh, the, the entire thing doesn't change color, but most of it does. Um, and so they'll, they'll match the flower so that when a bug comes in, he doesn't know that there's a spider there, and in he goes. So I found lots of uh, crab spiders around. A quick look here is unfortunately not yielding anything too interesting. Uh, so again, spending a day in the field is often not with your camera in hand, but just looking for the subject that you're after. There's a few other interesting approaches that we could take to flowers like this. The individual flowers you can see are a little bit, uh, they're, they're kind of rotten on the edges of the leaves. They might be a little bit past their prime. Um, so an individual flower, you, you'll probably find some good examples. But if I wanted to get in and, and maybe photograph the entire lot of them, there's some techniques that I can try. I've got my macro lens on now, so it's not the best lens to try this. But uh, maybe after I'm done experimenting a little bit here with the spray bottle, We'll switch out lenses and we'll try to do some pan blur stuff. And then we'll finish off with uh, some more water droplet refractions inside. But Maybe if we walk along that fence row over there, we get out of the wind. Yeah. See how well. Every flower and every plant is going to behave differently when you spray with water. So sometimes you don't know what's going to happen until you try. The center of this one is gra grabbing the, uh, the droplets nicely. Sometimes it's just smooth and soft and you don't get anything useful. Let's see what I can do with uh, there was a little leaf hopper there. He's gone. Let's see what I can do here. Sometimes you want to find the anomaly where bugs have died and leaves have blown around. Oh, yeah. And the wind is being a pain in the butt right now. I think that's a beautiful abstract kind of shot there. Kind of like the results. Let's zoom out a little bit, increase my aperture a bit, see if I can't get a little bit more depth in it, which is a challenge, especially because I have to deal with my shadow uh, being part of the frame, and I don't want it to be in there, so my angle has to be pretty particular. I want the direct sun. And you're right to say that I've got about uh, 20 hours of post-processing work when, <laughs> when I get home here. It's not going to be any shorter than that. But I'm happy with that. All right. So, you know, what might be an interesting uh, view next time, John, if, if Don is willing, is to maybe share with us some of his, you know, a short show and some of his post-processing work. Handlers and some uh, an interesting abstract artwork along the way. We could do a show on uh, your post post-production of course I'd be happy to show that it's kind of boring though you don't want to sit through all 20 hours of it well, it'll be, be like a, a summary of what but, it takes uh, to get I something done sure I can still it down 
to uh, be enjoyable over about a half an hour or so just to get sure. the, the general idea, the general workflow. Yeah, What's that'd be great. And, uh, and how extreme you can push an image. Um, some of the work that I do in macro, you really have to struggle to get sharpness. It's not because you don't have the image crisp in focus and everything. It's you have to deal with diffraction limiting, which will blur things inherently by the very nature of the way that light bends through a very, very small aperture. Uh, and if you're trying to get more of a depth of field, you'll hit that diffraction limit. Landscape photographers will often see it if they're shooting at f22 or smaller. Everything kind of gets a little bit soft, and you see a lot of that in macro work. So sharpening is, uh, is very important. See if we can't find our way back through this flower maze. All right. For this next exercise, sharpness is not the point. We're specifically going to be going after uh, abstract patterns and lines and shapes and colors. So what that involves us doing is taking a, in, in this case it's back to the workhorse lens that I have, the 24 to 105. And with that lens, I can't do on the other lens. So now I'm going to try to look over here and you, if you can see that there's a lot of different colors and patterns, a lot of nice color complements too. You've got some purples and some greens. So I'm going to set my camera to uh, almost exactly the opposite settings, a very low ISO and a very, very, very small aperture of f22 or something in that neighborhood. So at that setting, my shutter speed is going to be around 1 20th, 1 30th of a second. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look through the viewfinder um, and I'm going to have something roughly in focus. But then I'm going to spin the camera and I'm going to zoom the camera at the same time. Cool. And this lens works really well with it because I can hold the, uh, the zoom ring and then just spin the camera. So I'm, I've got a central point of contact and I'm not letting it go too far off course. So if I take that shot, I'm going to use you as an experiment here, John. Wow, that's, that's interesting. I don't know if anybody at home can, can see that, but uh, that you've got a very cool abstract swirly effect. Now, it doesn't Early work. Early sports photographers used to do follow focus, right? Yep. Because they only had F4. That's right. At the best in a stadium, so they would have to uh, follow the, fo the focus, would have to uh, follow the runner, and they would have to uh, zoom and follow focus. And and sometimes they got spectacular shots. And oftentimes they didn't. But <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. Uh, so in this case here, now I've got these colors, and I'm not going to play around with just the flowers, because if I did that, it might be pretty boring from this angle anyhow. Shooting in behind, there's uh, lots of sunlit dirt and things that are not very interesting. But if I take the camera, and I zoom in to a certain degree, and I just uh, spin the camera as I take that image, I get a very interesting swirl effect out. And I can spin the camera and move the camera along very interesting ways and by doing this and by sometimes your your approach is going to be wildly different it's really some people can even call this camera tossing where people will set the camera on a two-second timer and then throw it in the air right I don't recommend doing that uh, <laughs> but you get very interesting abstract unique results uh, I'll be sharing some of these images that are created with this effect and uh, it's it's all abstract. It's just it's a lot of fun to just see what every image is going to be different. The only things that you can really control is what kind of spiral you're creating, mm -hmm. but also what colors you're deciding to include in that composition. So I've got some vibrant pinks, I've got some greens, I've got a little bit of white in there as well to balance things out. So these colors just become interesting blurs. Now, and, exactly. Yeah. Now I've got sky in there as well. Uh, I've got a road behind us too, so that might not be terribly effective. But let's say if I take a pan and I go like that. Well, that creates some really cool stuff. If I can get the timing just right. This is all just experimentation. I'm sure what speed what is. speed is he shooting at to do that, John? Alright, 20th. Ah. 
20th, which is hard to do in bright sunlight. You know, if, if it was any shadier than this, I could probably play around with maybe one third of a second, or one thirtieth of a second. Okay. It gives you a little bit more flexibility in how those compositions are created. All well, right, maybe you can so block that wind, John. Grab an okay. interesting flower, and we're going to go into that uh, that interesting greenhouse. All right, we're well. going to go from uh, from 32 degrees to 42. Oh. I don't know higher. how long I'm going to have to stay in there. So, I'm going to look at some of them. I really like these, these flowers from earlier. There was one in here that really caught my eye. This beautiful little guy right here. I really like the colors in it. Just don't tell the owners that we're picking your flowers. I'm sure they won't like us very much for it. We got a flower. Now, I will need uh, my macro gear again. My sensors get filthy, by the way, because I'm always changing lenses and and what have you. So I need the macro gear. Throw that guy back on. And I'll need the off-camera flash. And in order to give it a bit more juice, so that it doesn't die on us at all, I'll be plugging in my external battery grip, or a battery pack, which adds eight extra battery cells to the off-camera flash, so that it'll keep up with my camera's rapid fire. Got that, and that. Close that up again with our flower in hand. All right. If I can get you to hold that there, John. Off we go. Save this part for the end because we'll be dead by the end of it. I can't guarantee I'll be able to stay in there because that is still that is hot. Well, we're probably only going to be in there for about two minutes, I hope. All right. Careful about that grass there. All right. Oh God. Oh boy. Let's see what we can do. All right, this guy's taking me into a hall. Oh, this is hot. <laughs> so we're going to go in here for a couple of minutes. And I'm not sure we might lose you because everything may melt. Oh, Lord, sift. It's like, oh, it just takes the breath out of you. Suffer for your art, John. Set your camera up there, John, and we'll get our flower here. We're going to spray this web with water. My spray bottle is running a little low. I don't know what kind of spider makes these webs. They're incredibly dense. And they hold water droplets very, very nicely on a big scale. So let's move this strand out of the way. And now if I were to put this flower in behind, you might even be able to see it in there. It oh, gets wow. refracted inside of each of those little water droplets. And so you can make some really interesting compositions by having this held in place. Right. Uh, John, you're going to be my uh, my assistant here, if you don't mind. Okay, I'm not uh, charge that much. <laughs> you don't charge that okay, much. Okay, I'm going to put this uh, earpiece down, Bruce, so i got to hold the flower in place. Here. You're okay. going to have to come around maybe yeah. on this okay. side here. So, we are likely going to find out that we've been disconnected. Well, anyway, we'll do this right. just for the fun of it. How about and so right something there. something like that looks good. And I'm going to set the camera to back to a manual exposure, the low ISO. There's no wind in here, so that must be my hands should keep. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. We'll deal with that. And uh, now, uh, I can climb up on this skid and kill my knees. If you can put the flower just a little bit lower back down here, just uh, pointed perpendicular. Oh, that's perfect, right there. And I'm going to grab this. I'm going to get right in. Beautiful. Let me just zoom in a little bit further. So 
Okay. All right. That's about all we can handle from in here. We have to get out of here before we melt. Oh, I know. Okay. It's got to be 40. 40 something. Somebody's going to pay us for doing that. You need to hook up the PayPal to the plus one button, didn't you, Bruce? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's go under the shade uh, yeah. at the back door of the people's house here and get some shade. And... Oh. Well, that was fun. That's like being in the worst. It makes the 32 sauna. degrees weather out here seem cool <laughs> and refreshing. All right. Oh my God. He was conveniently sprayed by a skunk earlier today. Okay. Dog went and played in this with a skunk this morning. Uh. These flowers are really interesting too. You can see that they have lots of pollen at the center of them. Maybe I can get in there and try and photograph some of those pollen granules. Are you saving this for later? Oh yeah, thank you. Well, uh, might, might find another use for that at some point. I'll just rest that there for now. Oh. All right. Let's kick it into the five to one magnification. And at that setting, I'm going to have to have an aperture at around f4.5 to get decently interesting results. Now, there's lots of, oh, there's also bugs and stuff inside there, too, which is pretty cool. What you don't really realize is when you're photographing pollen or anything like pollen, uh, the structure, the organic structure, is different from one flower to the next. There's a bug there. See if I can't adjust my settings to shoot him. Without scaring him. Nope, can't do that. All right. So let's go back. Oh, he's back. Oh, well. won't worry about him. Let's get the pollen anyhow. So let's try some of the stuff that's just sitting there on that one leaf. It's a little bit more free form. If I get a low angle on the flash, it might even reveal a bit more texture. And so I can get in there. My depth of field, by the way, is going to be far less than a millimeter. And this is swaying in the wind, and I'm not braced. So, so it's a recipe for frustration. Uh, but let's see if I can't make anything useful out of it. All right. Finding the subject is always the hardest part. Did I get anything? Oh, did I ever. It looks almost like fish eggs, this one, John. <laughs> it does. <laughs> let's uh, zoom in on that there. It does look like row. It really does. Yeah. See if you can put it up to the thing and see if we can... Kind of in, uh, in the sunlight here at the moment, but if we can kind of get a bit of shade on it. Uh, I'll be posting this one online for sure. Yeah, that's, that definitely looks like fish eggs. Yeah, and you can see that they're, they're spiky in a sense as well. I don't know if that's so that they could stick on to insects or, or other bugs. Bug oh, there's a bug. And there's another bug right up there. There's a little tiny weevil. Let's see if I can't uh, adjust my settings to get in here. I'm going to try to start shooting this little weevil because he's not he's not uh, sitting still. The other side of it. You're not getting all your flash. No. That's the hard thing about this flash thing is because I'm hand holding it, I, I don't have a third eye to see where I'm actually pointing it. And the bug never stays still, right? Oh, looks like he's gone. Well, bug number two. This angle looks good for him because I can see straight through to the dark background there. Let's see if I can't get the flash to be over here and the camera to be over here.
You moved. Scared you scared him. him. And I didn't even get a shot in focus because I only got like four <laughs> shots there. All right. Well, let's see if I can't find him again. Now that he's startled, this might be a bit trickier. He's underneath. Yeah, oh, I he's got coming right your now. way. Here, yeah, let me uh, no, 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 no. see if I can get him to come your way. No, no, I, I, I can see him right now, and I got a nice little view sort of of his underbelly. Mm -hmm. So I can kind of get something to happen there. Flash. I might want to try to get in the flash coming through this flower when I was watching it here, shoot from here. No, the light was coming right through. Oh, okay. So you want me to try and shoot through the flower to get some light coming? Yeah. Now, let's see what happens. Adjust the magnification because they'll be shooting a flower, not a bug. Set the field a bit greater. Let's see if I can. This petal here looks a little nicer, though. Let's try to see what happens if I backlight on that. Just my flash power to be brighter. Yep. Yeah, that's interesting. It really brings out the veins in the flower. Okay. All right. I think we're just about I, I think melted. we're just about melted here. Let's go over here. All right. Because there's a reflection in the window. <laughs> oh, there we are. So you can see us hanging out. <laughs> we can yeah. <laughs> Go stand in Not front of melt. the camera, you two silly guys. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Take the microphone with you. So this was really fun with with uh, Don and uh, virtual photo walks. And where are we again? We are at the Wildflower Farm near Warminster. Warminster. Not open to the public, but they were nice enough to let us come by. Uh, they do sell wildflower seeds and stuff online, though, if anybody wants to have their own garden to poke around in. This place around the Plus website. That's wildflowerfarm.com. Okay, there's your plug, guys. There you go. We'll see you again. All right, thanks. All right, take care, guys. Thanks, Don.